Okay. So we have our frontal bone with our coronal suture behind it. The frontal bone has the supraorbital foramen and the glabella. Then we have our parietal bone, which has the sagittal suture next to it. And the parietal then joins the occipital, which has the lambdoidal suture behind it. And the parietal also joins the temporal bone, which has the squamous or squamosal suture on it. So we'll start on this one. So the temporal bone has a squamous region near the top, tympanic region near the ear, mastoid region in the back, and the petrous region underneath. And on these regions, you have the external auditory canal, which is your ear hole, the styloid process, and the mastoid process. And between those is the stylomastoid foramen. And we have the zygomatic process that comes forward to your cheek. Then if we go to the occipital bone, we have the nuchal lines, which go across, superior and inferior, occipital crest, and occipital protuberance, which is the bump you can feel. Then we have the big hole, frame and magnum, with the occipital condyles, which are the knuckles on each side. The pharyngeal tubercle is the bump up here. And you have the hypoglossal canal, which is in the side of your neck, basically, here and here. Then while we're here, let's do some holes. So I'm going to start my frame and magnum my hypoglossal foramen, then I have my jugular, which is next, my carotid canal is next, then I'm going to go up to my foramen ovale, which is the oval, this, with the spinosum just next to it, and the foramen lacerum is next to that, over here, and the only other hole left is the one that you can see on the inside, I flip this over, I have the foramen rotundum, in the optic canal, which are actually part of the sphenoid bone, and the internal auditory meatus, which is inside here. So if I go back to this one, a couple more things to do are the pterygoids, which are these big bumps here, and then I'll do the bones underneath. I have the maxilla bone, which has the incisive foramen by my front teeth, the palatine process, which is here. I have the palatine bone, which is here, and the bomer bone, which is there. So if I go to my front, my face, I have my nasal bone, my lacrimal bone with the lacrimal fossa, which is for crying. I have my maxilla bone with the infraorbital foramen, and a zygomatic bone with my frontal and temporal processes where I stick out into those bones. Then the last thing to do is my vomer, which has the this part here, it joins my ethmoid, which is in there, the perpendicular plate. The ethmoid pops up into my head as the crystagalli and the cribiform plate on each side. That leaves a sphenoid bone, which is all this, my lesser and greater wings. The sphenoid has the cella turcica, which is in here, and that has a tuberculum cella in the front, a dorsum cella in the back, and a hypophyseal fossa where you'd actually sit down in the saddle here. So the optic canals, the superior orbital fissure, and the foramen rotundum are those holes there. And I think that's everything on that that we get to this one. So mandible. So we have the cond condyloid process with the mandibular condyle, notch, and the coronoid process. The ramus has an angle and a body here. The alveolar margin is the teeth. The mental foramen is near my chin. The mandibular foramen is in my jaw. And the mylohyoid ridge is in there for my tongue. And the mental symphysis is where those two bones glue together. The only thing I left off was the mandibular fossa, which is the cup in my temporal bone where my mandible bone should fit inside of it. Like that. And that's that's it.